Welcome to the Weekday Report for Sunday, November 18th. I'm Clara Tappa. Here's a brief look at the news. Storms in the Kenosha area brought down trees, branches, and power lines and scattered debris throughout the county on Sunday. Tornado sirens were activated a little after 10 a.m. when a warning was declared in the far northwestern part of the county. That was in connection with a strong storm that skirted north of the county. Another storm before 2 p.m. caused branches to fall on the street on Lincoln Road and at 57th Street and 22nd Avenue in Kenosha. After 3 p.m., trees were reported down in Bristol and Paris, and power lines were downed in Summers. Superintendent Michelle Hancock plans to leave the Kenosha Unified School District at the end of the year. Hancock made her surprise retirement announcement on Friday afternoon, hours after the school board approved new labor contracts with teachers and other employees. Hancock joined the district in 2010. A 34-year-old Kenosha woman was killed in a head-on collision with a dump truck in the 2000 block of 39th Avenue Friday. Patricia Miners was pronounced dead at the scene. A 14-year-old passenger whom police have not identified was taken by flight for life. Miners was driving a small SUV southbound on 39th Avenue when she collided with the dump truck. The dump truck driver was treated for minor injuries. Further information about the crash hasn't yet been released. A holiday tradition began anew on Friday. Here's John Kadovich with the story. To get ready to hear the bell ringers, the Salvation Army's Red Kettle Campaign has begun today, Friday, for this holiday season. The annual fundraising effort collects donations to support the group's food pantry and other community services. The group has decided that it's going to rely completely on volunteers this year, doing away with paid bell ringers. The idea is to apply what is saved in salaries toward those community services. That also means they've got an urgent need for volunteers. They have some 4,000 two-hour slots to fill. You can volunteer by going online, calling the Salvation Army, or visiting its office. I'm John Kadovich, reporting for the Kenosha News. Thanks, John. The central figure of a little-known early civil rights battle was at UW Parkside Saturday, urging students to fight injustice. Sylvia Mendez was a little girl in Orange County, California in 1943 when her parents tried to enroll her in their neighborhood school. Instead, she was sent to a segregated Mexican school in another neighborhood, and her parents sued, striking a victory for civil rights seven years before the more famous Brown v. Board of Education case. Kenosha's Melvin Gordon had another big day on the field for the Wisconsin Badgers on Saturday. Dave Marin has the story. Bradford graduate Melvin Gordon, number 25, ran for 146 yards and a touchdown in Wisconsin's 51-3 win over Indiana on Saturday in Madison. Despite another huge day in the midst of a big year, Gordon is not thinking about the NFL draft. Yeah. I mean, is that even a thought in your head right now, or where, where are you at as far as like that? It is, you know, I, I, I try not to think about it if I'm a believer or not right now. You know, I, we got two more games left, three more games left. Um, you know, that's all I'm focusing on right now. I'm not really worried about the draft and things like that. Just focusing on playing and helping our team win. What's trending today? Should Gordon go pro now, or should he wait? Weigh in on our Facebook page. Up next is Dave Marin with a look at another Kenoshan in college football in this week's Athletic Republic Athlete of the Week. Tough on the corner. I'm Kenosha News Sports Editor David Marin with the Athletic Republic Kenosha News Athlete of the Week. Harborside graduate Trey Waynes, number 15, fashioned another solid game at cornerback for 13th ranked Michigan State on Saturday. The redshirt sophomore who played at Bradford logged four solo tackles and recovered a fumble in the Spartans' 41-28 win at Nebraska. Waynes owns 36 tackles this season and has started each game for 9-1 Michigan State, which tops the Big Ten's Legends division at 6-0. Congratulations, Trey, the Kenosha News Athletic Republic Athlete of the Week. Thanks, Dave. Now here's a look at what we're working on today. Denise Lockwood is looking into how earlier Black Friday opening times at big box stores are affecting local mom and pop shops. And Jill Roselle is crunching numbers on deer versus car crashes in Kenosha County. Pick up a copy of the Kenosha News and check kenoshanews.com for all the details on these stories and more. I'm Clara Tappa with the Weekday Report.